afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month and that means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. Today our chefs are preparing recipes for brunch and breakfast. That's a theme that many of you viewers have asked us to do. Before we get started, we want to acknowledge the passing of one of our loyal viewers, Anita Amston of Chester. Our thoughts are with Anita's family and friends. We also have news of another loyal viewer, Cecile Clark from Winooski, recently celebrated her 97th birthday. Cecile has watched Across the fence since it began back in 1955. Be assured that all of your cards and notes are read and much appreciated. Now I'm pleased to inform another loyal viewer that she is the winner of last month's free drawing for the Coastal Living Cookbook. Congratulations to Sandra Lovejoy from Morrisville. You'll be getting your cookbook in the mail any day now and we know you'll find many recipes to enjoy. This month we're holding two free drawings, one for Good Housekeeping's Cooking for Friends with more than 350 delicious recipes and the second drawing is for the book tips for using your slow cooker, which was donated by, of course, our own <laughs> Carolyn Peak. I'll let you know how to enter the free drawings at the end of the show. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our chefs, Carolyn Peak from Williamstown, who usually has a slow cooker meal to share with us. <laughs> Thanks for donating that cookbook. And to my left are Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis, both from South Hero. And Deb, you're starting off today. The kitchen is yours. Well, great. Thank you so much. Sure. Well, I do have to share that my family often enjoys breakfast for dinner. So I hope our viewers are going to enjoy our recipes today to try at home, regardless if you do them for breakfast, brunch, or dinner. I want to start with my viewer recipe from Virginia Lange of Sheldon for Sky High Biscuits. Now this dough is rich in butter, it has an egg mixed in, and has both white and wheat flour. A couple of tips for making really great biscuits. Make sure your baking powder is fresh for your maximum rise and keep the butter chilled before use. Now I think these biscuits would be great with like a sausage gravy, but I also made something to pour over them. It's called blueberry maple syrup. Now I know you shouldn't mess with maple syrup because it's great on its own, but if you want to try something different, this is quick and simple. You just boil a cup of maple syrup with a cup of blueberries and a little bit of lemon juice. Boil this in a deep pan, so you don't want it to boil over, for about 10 minutes. Let it cool to lukewarm and then add another half cup of blueberries. And we'll see if we can pour this without making too much of a mess. But you get the wonderful tanginess of the blueberries, there we go, and the sweetness of the maple syrup. So you can give that blueberry maple syrup a try. Whether you do it on pancakes or biscuits, the choice is yours. Now the next recipe coming up is super simple and you get a wonderful taste of bacon, cheddar, onions, and eggs in every bite. You take refrigerated biscuits, cut them into quarters, and just dip them in a mixture of egg and milk and place the quarters in your baking pan. With the extra milk and egg mixture, you mix in diced bacon, shredded cheese, some onion, pour that over the top and bake it. And you've got this wonderful, easy dish. I'm gonna show it to you right here. That's super to serve. My last recipe to share is this tomato broccoli cheddar strata. This is a great do-ahead recipe. You can take cubed bread, nice way to use up any leftover bread you might have on hand, and just fill it in a 13 by nine baking pan. Make a mixture of eight eggs, three cups of milk, some salt and pepper, and pour that over the bread. You're going to then toss with, or top with, excuse me, some halved cherry tomatoes, some broccoli, and some cheese. You want to let this sit in the refrigerator overnight because you want the bread to absorb all those flavors. In the morning, take it out of the fridge, top it with some more cheddar cheese, some dollops of ricotta, and bake it for about an hour. You want the strata to become nice and golden brown, puffy on the top. Let it cool a little bit. I like to cut it in squares, put it in a pretty dish, and serve it on your table. So I hope you folks give these a try. I also want to say happy anniversary to my husband. Oh, 37 years. <laughs> <laughs> so Carolyn, looking at everything you have, I don't think I'm ever going to skip breakfast again. 
oh, good. <laughs> That's the most important meal of the day, you I know. I know, I know. <laughs> Well, I'm going to start off with something that's a recipe I found that's a little unusual. It is peanut butter bread, and you prepare it in a, you mix it up in a blender. So you just dump everything in together, blend it up, put it into your greased pan, and put it in the oven. And I think that you could probably just make a jam sandwich with the peanut butter bread, and then you've got a peanut butter and jam sandwich. And I'll just set just so people can see it some more as we're talking, I'll put a piece right there. My viewer recipe comes from Barbara Ringy of Middlebury, and this is a hash brown omelet. You make it right in your frying pan, and I'm gonna scoop out a piece here. If it's, well, it's gonna give me way more than I need. I know, I'll do this one, that's a little better. It has your eggs, it's got hash browns on the bottom, and then a mixture of eggs and green onion and pepper and some milk and some cheddar cheese. And you mix that all up and just let it cook in the pan with a cover on top of the pan. Doesn't take very long at all, so you've got a good breakfast in a hurry. Now, if you want a good breakfast in a hurry and you're tired of stopping at the fast food places for, you know, their egg dishes or whatever, I have down here, and I'm going to set it up on this plate, breakfast muffins. And these are made with scrambled eggs, bacon, flour, baking powder, uh, cheese, milk, oil, um, oil and an, another egg. And you just, you cook up your eggs, you scramble those, you cook the bacon, you crumble them up and put them into the dough for the muffin. Have this all ready and just pop one in the microwave in the morning as you, before you head out the door, grab that and you are all set. So you don't have to go and wait somewhere in line and spend extra money on things. Now if you want something kind of pretty and sort of fun, how about a berry breakfast parfait? And these are a sauce made of raspberries, and you cook it with some brown sugar and orange juice and cornstarch, and then you layer it into a parfait dish, or I've also done it in a larger dish. If you're going to have a bunch of company, just do it like that. And then you use granola and Greek yogurt, and you layer things just as if it was a parfait. Really nice little way to either head out the door with it or to just, you know, put a, some dishes out and let people fix their own. Really nice way to do a quick breakfast. Now, you know me, I like dessert, and I'll even have dessert for breakfast if I have to. These are cake mix cinnamon rolls. It starts with a yellow cake mix, and then you just add your flour, dry yeast, water, butter, things like that, and you treat them just like any other raised dough, and lo and behold, you come out, once you've rolled them out, put on cinnamon and sugar, rolled it up, cut them and put them in the pan, and you have these really nice cinnamon rolls, put some frosting on them, and you're all set. Uh, what an easy way to make breakfast. Yes. And I found using refrigerated biscuits is really a quick way to do things. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like I told Deb, breakfast is your most <coughs> important meal of the day. Right. So make time to at least take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Carolyn. I have a lot of breakfast and brunch recipes, and I'm going to show you some of my very favorite ones today. And I'm going to begin with this one right here. It's my marmalade monkey bread, and doesn't that look good? It's made with only five ingredients, and you can make the whole thing in about an hour or a little more, and that includes the cooking time. Just mix marmalade, chopped nuts, honey and butter together, and you cut those store-bought biscuits into four sections or quarter them <clears throat> and layer them with marmalade uh, and put in some uh, with the marmalade and some spices like cinnamon and sugar and put them in the tube pan and I wish you were all here to sample this along with us it's just delicious and for those of you cooking for one or two this keeps very well 
in the freezer. Now, scones are always a big favorite when it comes to breakfast and brunch, and this is a favorite recipe of mine. It actually came from Scotland, and these are called bacon scones. Now, the mixture of the bacon, along with chopped onion, shredded cheddar, and along with a teaspoon of ground mustard creates a delicious flavor to go with eggs or a green salad. And you can make these in about a half an hour. And did you know that bacon is one of the oldest meats in the world? Uh, archaeologists have found that the Chinese used pork bellies to make bacon way back in 1500 BC. So I think we have bacon in our genes. That's why we all look at so, uh, like it so much. And I have another recipe with bacon. It's right here. It's a bacon and eggs pie. It's made in a nine inch pie plate and using store-bought buttermilk biscuits to make the crust. It's filled with eggs, milk, cream cheese, and topped with what else? Bacon. And it's served with a fresh green salad or a fruit salad. And I haven't had lunch yet and all this food is making me very, very hungry. Um, do a recipe. Let's see. We're going to go up to East Burke, and this is from Joyce Humphrey, and this is a recipe she calls Jimbata. So in your pan, or I used a two-quart uh, dish like you see here, you layer onion, pepper, mushrooms, sliced tomatoes, and then you add some cooked sausage and top it with a jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce, and bake at 350 for about 45 minutes. Very simple to make. And I think for brunch, this would not only be uh, good, but also for a lunch or dinner. It's a very hearty meal, a good meal for the fall days coming up, and we thank Joyce for that. Now, I say I'm never gonna buy another cookbook, but I was down at Clark's IGA in South Londonderry, Vermont a while back, and on the shelf was this fall recipe cookbook. Well, you know I had to buy it, and so I chose a recipe from the cookbook for you today. And here it is, I'm going to put it up here on the counter, and it's an easy sausage pesto ring. Now, why is it so easy? Well, it has just five ingredients it made in a fluted tube pan. Now, it's made in a very clever way. You take the store-bought biscuits and top them with some pesto, some sausage and shredded Italian cheese. Then you take those biscuits and put four atop the other and press them together, then turn them on their side and lay them in the fluted tube pan and it comes out to create this delicious uh, pesto ring, sausage pesto ring. Um, I think it's one of the better recipes that I'm showing you today because it's easy to make, very creative and very unusual, good for any uh, kind of a get together. But even though it may be the best one, this is my absolute favorite. <laughs> you viewers know that I like cherries very much, and this is a cherry yeast coffee cake. Now, a lot of people don't do yeast anymore because it takes a while to make and let the dough rise, but this is certainly well worth the effort. Now, once the dough is ready, you just take a can of cherry pie filling, put it over the top, and then you put on an almond glaze like you see here and bake it at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes and you are ready to go. And Judy, uh, do you think this is something that uh, I should try to enter at the Champlain Valley Fair? I think you should. I love that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's terrific. Well, as always, there are a couple of different ways to get the recipes today. You can get all of them by going online to the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the web page. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamped self-addressed business size envelope to Breakfast and Brunch, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. Please remember, if you're ordering the recipes, to include $2 and a stamped self addressed envelope. Your envelope will be used in the drawing for the cookbooks and even if you're not ordering the recipes you can still use the address on your screen to enter the free drawing. Just send along your name and address. Good luck to all of you and thanks to all of our chefs for sharing some of these wonderful breakfast and brunch recipes with us. They will be back on October 6th with apple recipes. Can't wait for that. In the meantime we encourage you to visit your local orchard and farmers market and enjoy all the locally grown fruits and vegetables that are so plentiful this time of year. Thanks for
for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson.